walls. Bagram Maximum Security Prison outside Kabul. Some have called it Afghanistan's Guantanamo Bay. It holds what the West calls high-value targets, many caught on the battlefield. Originally built and run by the Americans, up until now no film crews have ever been allowed in here. It's taken me more than two years to try and gain access to Bagram Prison and it was only when it fell into Afghan control that I'm now able to gain access. But as foreign military forces withdraw, a toxic political row has erupted over what to do with hundreds of suspected Taliban insurgents imprisoned here. People who have come out of the prison have told me this is a prison where they take innocent Afghans and turn them against their own country and government. The Afghan state's been releasing detainees, men the Americans say have blood on their hands. We are going to release people back out into the fight who clearly are hardcore terrorists. But most of these men have been held without trial, some for many years. So what is Bagram Prison actually like? The facility is located just outside the sprawling American-controlled Bagram Air Base. In 2013, the Afghan army took control of the wings containing Afghan-born prisoners. But US forces still oversee the cell blocks housing foreign combatants, and they're also in control of all the extensive perimeter security systems. When I arrived, it was visiting time. Many of these civilian families had to cross the country in order to spend less than an hour face to face with their incarcerated male relatives. The prisoners held here are considered by Western forces to be among the most dangerous Taliban insurgents in the country. My guide was General Farouk Barakzai, the Afghan army commander in overall charge of this place. When I was shown around Bagram prison, it still held some 1,343 inmates. This place was only built four years ago, and the overall conditions here were much better than anything I'd seen elsewhere in Afghanistan's notoriously run-down penal system. The prisoners were allowed one hour of outside exercise a day. There was even an orchard for the inmates. But there are strict rules here, and breaking them is not advisable, especially not rule number seven. Bagram is also a very intrusive facility. All areas are covered by CCTV. The roofs of cell blocks are grids, and all prisoner communications are monitored, very obviously so. I first met some inmates in the medical wing. All those waiting for treatment in this nearby holding pen were shackled, hand and foot. This man said he was a journalist and poet from Kandahar and was arrested in a night raid by U.S. forces. He's been held here for almost six months. If they've got evidence against me, they should show it to me. They should take me to a court and imprison me for life if that's what they want. But how can they just stick me here in background for no reason? Detention without trial was the complaint I heard again and again here. And this was the visiting area, where the families finally got some face-to-face -face time with their relatives. None of the prisoners are disabled. The wheelchairs are used to ferry the inmates around because the leg irons they wear means they cannot walk at speed. After the visits finished, I met an inmate's mother. 
I feel very bad because of all this worrying about him. We are all suffering from psychological problems now. Is this life? His father, brother and sisters come to see him and we are all leave crying. It's very difficult to see our son like this. There are lots of other like my son here. For God's sake, they should think about them. We only had one court hearing in one year and a half. Mohibullah said he was 16 and a simple shepherd from Helman province. The U.S. military says he's a Taliban coordinator who conducted bomb attacks. They say he was caught with a firearm, insurgent propaganda on his mobile phone, and tested positive for four types of explosives. Whatever the truth, after a year in Bagram prison, his views on the United States have crystallized. I hate them because I'm here for no reason. Of course I hate them. I want to ask them, what's my crime? If they told me clearly what evidence they had against me, I wouldn't mind if they kept me in prison for 10 years. But no one is asking about us. I have spent a year far from my mother and father. Why? What's the reason, I ask? All the men in this cell were among the 65 prisoners released earlier today. And the Americans are furious, saying they represent an enduring security threat. Does this decision make you angry? It, it makes me angry and sad, angry that we are going to release people back out into the fight who clearly are hardcore terrorists. Many of these people were caught red-handed. The tests on, the, on their fingers of explosives on their hands. I mean, it's, it's not as if this was questionable. These are the hardcore of literally maybe over a thousand that we've already released. But the Afghan authorities say that much of the evidence presented by the U.S. military is insufficient to take to court. And so the prisoners are being let go. Yes, um, It's an issue being taken personally at the very highest political level. There's no denying, though, that there are elements of al-Qaeda and the Taliban still in that prison. No doubt that there are also criminals who are uh, taken. But uh, the number of those people who are criminals real criminals are a minority. Uh, and then uh, uh, the very presence of this presence, prison is against the Afghan constitution, against all Afghan laws, and against the sovereignty of this country. The men praying here have all now been released. But the Afghan decision to set them free in the face of strong American objections is a further example of just how sour the relationship between these supposed allies has become. Yada Hakim reporting and you can see more of our report on our world inside Bagram prison which will be shown on the BBC News channel on Friday, February 28th.